guys. One Piece is almost over. Yup, you heard that right. One Piece will soon be entering its final saga. Meanwhile, I'm still doing a review for every arc in One Piece. Why is this show so freaking long? And now it's time to begin the first, out of two, chapter of the Sky Island Saga. So grab some drinks, pull out your favorite bedtime story, and realize nobody believes you can achieve anything as we embark towards Jaya, the island that mocks dreams. After 13 episodes of boring filler, Jaya is 9 episodes and 19 chapters. This time, we start off with Hawkeye Mihawk, who's looking at Luffy and Zoro's new bounty, being surprised with the rapid growth of these new rookies he met back in Baratie. Meanwhile, at the holy land of Mary Joas, a couple of crinkly baboons known as the Five Elder Stars talk about the vacant seat of the Seven Warlords. They hold a meeting to decide how to handle this situation. We're introduced to two new warlords, the Heavenly Yaksha, with a frozen bounty of 340 million berries, Don Quixote do Flamingo. I really don't want to cover your arc. And the 296 million bounty, Bartholomew Kuma, the Iron Giant. <laughs> Get it? Because he's a- Stop! You violated the law! They all gather, and we meet the world's most important figure in the Marines. Along with Fleet Admiral Sengoku. Hawkeye joins in to talk about the Straw Hats. The meeting gets interrupted by an unusual individual. This is Lafitte, a member of the Blackbeard Pirates. He recommends his captain as the new member for the Seven Warlords of the Sea. During this, Rockstar, a member of Shanks' crew, was ordered to deliver a message about Blackbeard to the strongest man in the world. This is Whitebeard, one of the four emperors of the sea. But we aren't gonna worry about those guys for another, like, 200 episodes, so we can just ignore them for now. Also, this man is gonna get an insane glow up. Back to our regularly scheduled program, the Straw Hats are sailing about when all of a sudden, they notice strange rubble falling from the sky. <laughs> out of nowhere, a giant ship crashes from the sky. After the Straw Hats skedaddle on out of there, Nami notices that the log post is pointing super north all the way to the sky. After snorting a bunch of glue, Robin mentions the rumors of an ocean above the sky, known as Sky Island. You're into some pretty weird stuff, Robin. <laughs> yeah, you can call me stuff, Robin, because uh, I'm pretty weird. I have a problem. During their investigation, Luffy comes across a map of Sky Island, yeah. known as Sky Pia. The monster trio go underwater to check out the ship. During this, they hear strange noises coming closer. These are the Mashira Pirates, a gang of salvagers who've all returned to Monk, led by Captain Mashira himself, who's seen Tarzan way too many times. They work on bringing up the ship. After failing to score with Nami, Mashira decides to end it all, but lands on the ship instead, meeting up with the monster tree. Don't worry, guys. The boys make it out of the turtle along with the monk. Tell me what happened. Are you dead? Where are the other- You see, there's a reason why Nami is the navigator and not the doctor of the crew. The sky goes dark. And when everyone turns around, a crazy phenomenon that can only best be explained in a PS1 cutscene unfolds. Hey, uh, guys, so I wasn't sure if you wanted me to bring the whiskey or the vodka, so I just bought both. Oh, shit, is that one piece? I fucking love that show, dude! These giant figures tower over everyone, leaving them speechless. The Straw Hats evacuate the area so fast, they literally make a wooden ship go light speed to safety. After a quick chill pill, Robin tells Nami that she grabbed an eternal pose from Mashida. This compass points to Jaya. The Straw Hats decide to go to Jaya in hopes of learning more about Sky Island. I wonder what this Jaya place is like. I hope it's relaxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also too, Chopper. The crew make it to Jaya. 
Luffy, Zoro, and Nami explore Mock Town while everyone else stays at the ship. I say we trash this and buy a new ship instead. During their exploration, they meet up with a bunch of strange individuals. Like this wrestler dude, a guy who clearly loves Duck Hunt, and this man who looks like he's got one of every disease. Hey, look! Apples! Luffy! The gang end up in a bar. Luffy and some totally not important, definitely a one-off filler character that has no importance to the story whatsoever, have an argument about the food. Once the man leaves, a much more dangerous one shows up. How come everyone I meet in this town is so tall? That is exactly One Piece in a nutshell. This is Bellamy the Hyena, a crazy, coked up rookie pirate worth 55 million berries. Once he heard about Luffy's 30 million berries, Bellamy came to size him up. Bellamy proves he's not such a bad guy after all. He buys Luffy a drink and they make a toast. <laughs> Never take a drink from a stranger. Not because it might be tampered, but because they will literally slam your face through a wooden table. Zoro is armed to the teeth, ready to cut Bellamy's head off. Before we enter the WWE Sweaty Weeb Smackdown 5, Nami asks the bartender about Sky Island. To Nami's displeasure, not only does he know nothing of the island, but everyone in the bar laughs at her. <laughs> this idiot believes in Sky Island. Ooh, look at me, I'm Nami and I wanna be a navigator, but a shark killed my adoptive mommy and forced me to be a slave for 10 plus years. Oh wait, that's actually extremely tragic. Bellamy mocks the Straw Hats for believing in such crazy fairy tales, telling them that far off dreams like Sky Island, the Emerald City, or the One Piece are just dumb stories for kids. Power and money is the reality of the world. The bar goes from noisy rambles to irrational violence very fast. Get lost! Get lost! Fuck you, Luffy! The One Piece isn't real! Who takes 1,000 plus episodes just to find some treasure? Zoro, no matter what happens, don't fight back. I understand you're trying to take the moral high ground like Shanks did by not fighting pointless battles, but I feel like this is literally the perfect time to fight back. Nami pulls Luffy and Zoro out of the bar, upset that they wouldn't fight back against those creeps. Then they meet up with the strange man from earlier. This is Marshall D. Teach, a simple man who loves the high seas as much as he loves cherry pie. Your two friends won that fight without even throwing a punch. Did we watch the same fight? Teach delivers one of the greatest speeches in One Piece. The dreams of pirates will never end. Teach is a man full of passion just like Luffy, who doesn't let a few nobodies stop them from believing in his dreams. The Straw Hats make it back onto the ship. Robin shows up and tells them that she found some info about Sky Island. A man who was banished from the town is living alone on the other side of the island. The gang go over to ask him about Sky Island. On the way to meet the man, the crew encounter another group of pirates who've returned to Mark. These are the Shoujo Pirates, led by the Sonar King, Shoujo himself. Before Shoujo can play his shitty mixtape, the Straw Hats run away and continue onward. Meanwhile, back at the bar, Bellamy overhears some dudes talking about the man the Straw Hats are going to see. Apparently, he's holding loads of treasure. So naturally, our good-natured and well-mannered boy Bellamy wants to pay him a visit. The Straw Hats make it to the man's decked out hype house, only to find out he's not as rich as he seems. They check around the place and Nami comes across a book called Nolan the Liar, a popular children's story from the North Blue. I was born in the North Blue territory. Nolan the Liar is the 400 year old story about a whimsical lad named Mont Blanc Noland. He'd always tell people crazy tales of his adventures that sounded like lies. Sound familiar? One day he told the king about a city of gold he found on his last voyage. Intrigued, the king decided to go to this island with Nolan along with 200 men. With only 100 men left, they made it to the island, which we later came to know as Jaya. Although 
though what they saw was just a regular old island. No gold city, hell, not even a single penny. Enraged by Nolan's deceit, the king ordered Nolan to be executed immediately. Before his death, Nolan's final words were that he believed the island must have sunk to the bottom of the ocean and absolutely nowhere else. After another fun episode of Reading Rainbow, a strange fellow yoinks Luffy into the ocean. The battle comes to a halt as Cricket suffers from a disease known as Kason. Kason these nuts! Oh! Oh! Cricket explains how despite the bad reputation Nolan gave to the family, he still continues to check for the lost city of gold. Not because he cares whether Nolan was right or wrong, but because he feels it's his destiny to continue looking for closure. Are you just about finished telling us your life story? Man. Luffy really is just a huge asshole, isn't he? The two monkey boys, Shoujo and Mashira, are just huge fans of the story and want to help Cricket out. I'm sure you could kick his ass. <laughs> He's right! I can kick Mashida's ass! That's right, guys. You too can kick Mashida's ass if you just believe in yourself. Cricket, Mashida, and Shoujo, known as the Sariyama Alliance, decide to help the Straw Hats find Sky Island. Cricket explains his hypothesis to get to Sky Island, and Zoro is very intrigued. The Straw Hats must make it up the Cumula Regalis, a giant mass of many clouds. Above it is where Sky Island is said to be. The only way to get that high is to ride the Knockup Stream, a powerful water stream that shoots up into the sky five times a month. The Straw Hats only have till noon before the last Knockup Stream of the month hits. In order to know exactly where the Knockup Stream will be, they must first catch a special bird called a South Bird, as in the name. South birds always point south, meaning they are the natural enemy of a nose pass, which always points north. And so the Straw Hats go hunting for a South Bird while the Sariyama Alliance works on modifying the Going Merry. Hey, you know what? This kinda reminds me of the bug hunting minigame in One Piece Unlimited Adventure for the Wii. Hey guys, DJ here. Just want to say that I've been streaming One Piece Unlimited Adventure for the Wii over on YouTube. Come stop by sometime. All right, back to the video. All we know is this thing's got a peculiar call. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. You should have received something in the mail about your car. Hey, that sounded peculiar. peculiar. While everyone just has the worst time in the forest, Bellamy and his crew arrive at Cricket's hideout, looking for the gold he has stored. The Sariyama Alliance fends off Bellamy's men, but then Bellamy unveils his devil fruit power to take them out. Bellamy ate the spring spring fruit, allowing him to turn parts of his body into springs. One Piece really has the dumbest powers, huh? Bellamy takes down the Sariyama Alliance and steals the gold. The Straw Hats come back with the South Bird thanks to Robin's broken abilities, only to see everyone beaten and bloodied along with the Mary. Cricket tells them that Bellamy was the one behind this. Granted, they would have figured this out anyway since that narcissistic asshole left his signature. And so Luffy goes back to Mock Town to pay back Bellamy. Back at the bar, a man comes in to show everyone Luffy and Zoro's ridiculous new bounties. Bellamy believes that they must be fake to stop other pirates from messing with them. Oh, Bellamy, you poor naive fool. Speak of the devil, Luffy calls for Bellamy. Help! I don't know how I got here, but... I can't, I can't get, get down. down. Battle between Bellamy and Luffy begins. Bellamy shows off his cool devil fruit powers, constantly mocking Luffy and Cricket's dreams. When Bellamy goes for the kill, Luffy takes a second to show Bellamy his new favorite anime. <laughs> Don't invite me to your party unless someone's getting knocked the fuck out. Sometime after Luffy leaves, Teach finds Luffy's new bounty, and he decides that he'll take his head to further his own goal. Then all the shady guys we met earlier gather around Teach. Jesus Burgess, a self-proclaimed champion. Von Ogre, the silent sniper. Doc Q, the reaper. And their captain, 
Blackbeard. Introducing the main antagonists of One Piece. Unless... Luffy makes it back with the gold, and just in time as the Going Merry is ready for battle. They say their goodbyes to Cricket, who has a severe smoking problem, and set sail with the Monkey Boys to find Sky Island. But Blackbeard is slowly closing in. With the help of the South Bird, they find the Knockup Stream. Before Blackbeard can attack the Straw Hats, the Knockup Stream sends Luffy and his crew flying straight up into the sky on their way to Sky Island to be continued. Holy shit, guys, they did it! They've made it to Sky Island. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to see what happens next. All right, so we just finished Jaya, so wonder what we have to do next. Oh, Skypea. Skip it, skip it, skip it. It's not important. Skypea is boring, it's too long, Upper Yard is a waste of time, Anel is a terrible villain. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Hello everyone, and welcome to my review for every arc in One Piece. We finally reached the end of the Sky Island Saga. It's literally only two arcs. A lot of people say that they don't like Skypea. It's been a very long time since I've seen it though, so let's finally put this debate to rest. So grab some seashells by the seashore, blast your favorite Eminem album, and dust off that Bible as we ascend to Skypea, God's playground. Skypea is 43 episodes and 66 chapters. 43 episodes? Jai was only 9! This is literally five times as long! Speaking of Jaya, this arc starts right where we left off. The Straw Hats ride the knockoff stream and basically confirm that heaven is real. This is the White Sea, an ocean of clouds filled with many dangerous balloon animals. Do you know what this is? I think it's one of the skyfish Nolan described in his- Chopper looks around the place and finds the friendly Sky Island tour guide. What do you want? To destroy you! Look, I don't mean to be disrespectful to the Sky Island customs or anything, but I personally would like to not be destroyed. Before our tourists receive their welcoming gifts, a knight swoops in on his noble steed to save the Straw Hats. This is Gonfall, the Sky Knight, and his bird Pierre. Pierre ate the horse horse fruit, turning him into a majestic derpy pegasus. Gonfall gives them an item called the One Whistle. If trouble ever arrives, all they have to do is blow on it and he will come to the rescue. Once Gonfall leaves, the Straw Hats arrive at Heaven's Gate, the entrance into Sky Pia in the White White Sea. At the entrance, they meet Amazon, the Heaven's Gate Inspector. She states that in order to get to Sky Pia, they must pay the entrance fee of 1 billion extol per person. Extol is the currency in Sky Pia. Here's the exchange rate in berries. This will be very important later. Listen, about the money. What if, you know, we don't have it? You may still pass. What? Damn. I wish places would just let us go like that without having to pay sometimes. Hey there, uh, tickets for Minions The Rise of Group, please? I, uh, I can't afford it though. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Go right ahead. The Straw Hats reach Skypea, known as God's Land. They all enjoy the island's soft clouds and mysterious plant life. Speaking of mysterious, they hear the angelic sounds of a harp being played by one of the citizens from Skypea. This is Conus and her cloud fox Sue. This is the most beautiful creature I have ever laid my eyes on. I will protect you at all times. Under no circumstances will I ever let anyone harm this delicate being. I would go full John Wick 1, 2, 3, and coming soon 4 if they ever harmed you. Mark my words. Anyways, Konus' dad, Pagaya, comes along riding a waver, a small boat powered by Skypea's greatest invention, dials. Dials are seashells that can store and release energy. The Sky people use these dials for everyday activities. Breath dials release air, which is how the waver runs. Flame dials for heat. Tone dials to record voices. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. And much more. Wait, so you're saying all our technology is powered by seashells? Well, shit. 
Time to get rich. While the gang chill at Konos' house, Nami is riding the waiver and finds an entire island in the middle of nowhere. This is known as Upper Yard, the place where God and his priests reside. Konos tells them not to explore Upper Yard or face God's wrath. Konus says that God can hear everything that goes on in the island. If someone steps out of line, then God will strike them with his holy judgment. There's actually a God? And so begins the story of how the Straw Hats become devoted Christian followers. Amen. God, huh? Wait, you mean you don't believe in God? Fear, Fear not, not, my child. That, that man, man shall, shall soon know my wrath. wrath. Also, also why is Why there a raccoon, raccoon dog, dog talking? talking? I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember doing that. that. The Straw Hats realize that Nami has been gone for a while, and so they go out to look for her. Before they do, soldiers known as the White Berets come to arrest the Straw Hats for entering Skypea illegally without paying the ridiculous entrance fee. Hey, uh, why are they crawling? All right, honey, I'm heading off to work. I'll see you later. I'll let the kids know that I'll pick them up at eight, all right? Okay, love you, bye. The captain of the White Berets tells them that they are currently 11th degree criminals and must pay 10 times the normal entrance fee. Nami finally arrives and Usopp explains the situation, but our reincarnated Mr. Krabs would rather die than spend money. So she commits attempted murder by attacking the captain. The soldiers attack the Straw Hats, but they easily take them down. The captain of the White Berets informs them that they have now become second degree criminals and will face the wrath of God's holy priests in Upper Yard. Nami wants to leave the island before anything bad happens, but we still got like 41 episodes, so that's obviously not gonna happen. While the Straw Hats prepare to leave, Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp get supplies back at Pagia's house. Meanwhile, Konus explains to Nami of a much faster way to escape Skypea. Huh, Konus seems a bit suspicious. Once Konus gets off the ship, a giant sea creature known as the White White Sea Super Express Lobster Wow, that is a mouthful. brings the Going Merry to Upper Yard as offerings to God. You bitch! Luffy and the gang watch the shenanigans unfold below. They decide to go rescue them, and Konus agrees to help them out. Oh, hell no! Konus takes the boys through Lovely Street over to the harbor to pick out a boat. They notice, though, that all the citizens are keeping their distance from them. Before they head out, Konus falls to tears and admits that she's trying to lead the Straw Hats to Upper Yard. The people of Sky Island are forced to help bring criminals to God's judgment or face his wrath themselves. As soon as she tells the truth, God wastes no time raining down his judgment on Konus for failing in her task. What can, what can I, say? I say? Snitches, Snitches be getting, be getting them, them stitches. stitches. They manage to dodge the blast just in time thanks to Gonfall. Then the boys take their boat to Upper Yard to save their friends. Nami and her team find themselves on the sacrificial altar in the middle of Upper Yard. Sacrifices? Nami, what's a sacrifice? <laughs> it's nothing, Chopper. Now get in the oven, you'll catch a cold. They decide to go explore while Chopper guards the ship. Hey guys, look at this. It's dirt. This arc is gonna be rough. Luffy's team arrives in Upper Yard and finds four gates. Each of these gates leads to an ordeal by one of the holy priests. The ordeal of swamp, iron, strings, and spheres. Oh. That last one doesn't sound too bad. The boys decide to go through the ordeal of spheres. As the name suggests, they're greeted with flying orbs floating all over the island. 
each one with a random object in the orb, from Surprise, dangerous animals to explosives. The host of the ordeal shows themselves. This is Satori, one of God's four holy priests. The boys begin to fight him, but through some unknown power called Mantara, Satori is able to read their movements and dodge their attacks. Further into the fight, Satori unleashes his ultimate dragon's fear technique at the game. Luffy manages to redirect the attack back at Satori. Once the smoke clears, Luffy uses the confusion to get behind and hold him down, while Sanji gives the priest severe brain damage. This truly is Ordeal of Love. Also, I just want to say that Satori's scream <laughs> literally sounds like the VA was murdered in the sound booth. You know what? It's been a minute. Let's check in on Chopper real fast. <laughs> Yep, that sounds about right. Shura, the priest who holds the ordeal of strings, came by the sacrificial altar to kill the Straw Hats, as this area is free game. Chopper immediately calls for Gonfall, but he's tending to his pumpkin, so it'll be an episode or two. Shura uses his spear to burn the ship while Chopper tries everything to stop him, but to no avail. Before Shura eventually kills Chopper, Gonfall arrives way too late to save him and fight Shura. What the fuck is going on right now? The fight ends with Sky Knight gone falling into the ocean. Chopper goes in to save him, despite the fact he can't swim because of, uh, you know, the whole devil fruit thing. I'm sure he'll be fine. Deep in Upper Yard, we're introduced to the Shandian Tribe, a group of warriors who plan to dethrone God and his priests to take back their homeland. This is Wiper, their leader. Literally the angriest character in One Piece by far. Also, we have Isa, a small girl with the same power of Mantara like this guy. The Shandians head to Upper Yard to fight the Holy Priests. While Luffy's team keeps on moving, Chopper and Gonfall manage to get out of the water thanks to a bunch of giant Southbirds. Nami's team keeps exploring around the island and then they make a shocking discovery. They find half a house facing the end of the island, similar to Cricket's place. Nami realizes that Upper Yard is the missing piece of Jaya that's been lost for 400 years. The city of gold that Cricket has been searching for wasn't in the ocean like Nolan predicted. It was in the sky. You'd think after so many attempts, he would have tried something different, though. The battle between the Shandorians and Holy Priests rage on, with the priests having the upper hand despite few numbers. The Straw Hats finally meet up with one another while Chopper is very traumatized. They gather up and explain what happened in the respective groups. The gang decide that they'll find the lost city of gold and take all its treasure. Before they call it a night, Nami befriends some local wolves and everyone starts party rockin' in the house tonight. Fun fact, this is one of Oda's favorite panels that he's drawn. The next morning, Usopp wakes up to take a fat shit the size of Chopper. When Usopp goes over to the Mary, he hears the sounds of a hammer hitting on wood, only to find someone working on the ship in the foggy night. All right, so either Casper truly is a friendly ghost, or Usopp took one too many shrooms. A bit later, the Straw Hats set sail on their quest by splitting into two teams. Luffy's team will look for the City of Gold, while Nami's team takes the Going Mary around the island so they can escape. Elsewhere, the three remaining priests are summoned to God's shrine to talk about the upcoming battle. All bow down to the might of Lord Enel. That, that doesn't seem quite right. Hold on. Oh, okay. That makes sense. All right. This is Anel, the god of Skypea. He's your stereotypical I'm evil cause fuck you kind of guy. Basically a less charismatic crocodile. He tells his priests about the completion of the Ark Maxim, his ultimate plan to rule over all. During this, Wiper prepares for the final battle against Anel. This time he swears he'll take his head to reclaim their land. 
The gold team are on the move, but like every turn-based JRPG, they get into a random encounter with a giant serpent that causes all of them to be separated. Back on the Mary, Gonfall eventually wakes up and explains a bit of the history between Upper Yard and Sky Pia. Until six years ago, I was God. Ah, so he's mentally insane. Sweet! 400 years ago, on the day when Gile was sent to Skypea, the Sky People saw it as holy land. To them, dirt is a sacred item known as Verth. Bunch of idiots, I know. They fought the Shandians and took their homeland for themselves, starting the 400 year war between Skypea and the Shandorians. Six years ago, when Gonfall was still the ruler of Skypea, Enel and his men, who came from another Sky Island, forcibly took Gonfall's position from him and have been tormenting the citizens of Skypea since. The battle between the 20 Shandorians and 50 Holy Priests begin. During this battle, Enel believes that of the 81 people on Upper Yard, only 5 will survive in 3 hours. And shit, they don't waste time as Wiper immediately takes out Shuda with a reject dial. If used too many times, has the power to kill a man. Things only get more insane as when Luffy is jamming out to the real Slim Shady, he encounters Wiper and they begin to fight. Surprisingly, Wiper has the upper hand, but the fight ends in a draw. Before the fight can continue, Luffy gets eaten by the serpent from earlier. So we won't be seeing him for like eight or nine episodes. Next up, Zoro is walking around and encounters Braum, a Shandorian soldier who uses pistols. He's using all three? Yeah, that's what I said. Zoro wins the fight, and over by some ruins, Chopper encounters one of the holy priests. This is Geratsu, who holds the ordeal of Swamp. He's really... Really fucking stupid. Despite his stupidity, Gedachu is ridiculously strong and uses clouds to suffocate people. It's a hard fight, but Chopper manages to win. And we've still got a lot more as Robin prepares to fight Yama, the commander of the Divine Soldiers, a raging bull with zero regard for what he does. Robin takes him down for carelessly destroying ancient history. Robin, Robin. Robert, Robert. In all honesty, this was such a cool fight and really just shows Robin's versatility as a character. Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing her in more action. Anel appears on the Going Merry, taking down Sanji and Usopp with a single bolt of lightning. That's right, Anel ate the Rumble Rumble Fruit, which gives him the power of lightning. Literally one of like the strongest devil fruits in this show. And he has immunity to physical attacks like all Logia fruit users. Anel simply tells Gonfall that he's done with Skypea and is in search of a bigger world to rule. He then summons his two lackeys to take care of them. Time to avenge our brother! <laughs> God, they're multiplying. Nami and Gonfall take them out. Konus and her dad arrive on the island along with Isa, who is looking for Wiper. After two hours, 24 people remain in Upper Yard. Robin finds some ruins, only to discover that it's the lost city of gold from 400 years ago. I'm seeing a lot more rock than gold, though. Chopper also ends up in the Lost Ruins, only to meet up with Clifford's cousin, Holy the Large White Dog, who's also a boxing champion. Coming soon to PBS Kids, his owner is Ohm, the final priest who holds the ordeal of iron. Chopper tries to run away, but Ohm manages to catch up and makes a new fur coat. Not long after, Wiper, Gonfall, and even Zoro surround Ohm. The end is drawing near but not near enough. Ooh. And so begins the Battle Royale One Piece Smash Bros ripoff between Wiper, Gonfall, Zoro, Ohm, and even the giant snake. Nami and Isa arrive on the battlefield, but they, along with Gonfall and Pierre, are swallowed by the serpent. Zoro finds Chopper lying unconscious on the ground and locks his sights on Ohm. Now it's Zoro versus Ohm. Ohm creates a steel cage to trap everyone inside. Hold up. This cage looks oddly familiar. Almost like some kind of bird ca- Oh my god! Ohm uses a cloud sword that he can freely manipulate, but it's as tough as steel, giving Zoro a hard time. And yet, the battle comes to a close as Zoro wins with an even stronger version of his energy blast. Cause... 
swords can apparently do that now. Robin encounters Anel in the ruins and accidentally spills the beans about the golden bell. Oopsie whoopsie, you fucked up, Robin. Back near the Going Merry, one of Anel's prisoners confronts Conus and her dad. He tells them about Anel's true objective. Once Anel finds the Golden Belfry, he plans to destroy Skypea by sending it down to the Blue Sea, while he gets away on the Maxim, a giant flying ship that his prisoners were forced to build. Anel plans to find a place known as the Endless Verth and rule over it like a true god. Anel, of course, is such a nosy Nancy with his mantra, so he aimbots the dude. Pagaya pushes Conus out of the way, but unfortunately, Pagaya gets caught in in the blast and dies. Conus heads to Angel Island to warn everyone of Anel's plan. Holy shit. We really covered a lot, guys. Let's take like a five minute break or something. Anel brings down everyone above him, causing Nami and Gonfall to escape the snake. Cause, Cause wow, wow this, this place, place sucks. sucks. <sighs> the animators must have been uh pretty down bad that day. Just as Anel almost predicted, the final five gather. Gonfall, Wiper, Robin, and Zoro all stare down the self-proclaimed god. The four warriors prepare to fight Anel. Get him, Gonfall! <laughs> ah shit. Well, uh. Robin can probably talk this out, right? <laughs> Spoke too soon. Okay, Zoro, now we're talking. This man can do literally anything. <laughs> Oh, come on! Thanks to the powers of a sea prism stone, Wiper is able to grab Anel and shoots him with a point blank rejectile. Hell yes, Anel is dead. Finally, we can get off this stupid island. Oh, and he uses his lightning powers to restart his heartbeat. Anel is way too powerful. If only we had like some rubber or something to insulate the lightning. Once Anel takes out Wiper, all that remains is Nami. And I think we can all agree that she's definitely not winning this one. I want to go with you. I've always wanted to go to Endless Verth. Did we learn nothing? Nami comes with Anel to the Ark Maxim, a giant golden ship that can fly in the sky powered by his lightning. Over at the ruins, after like 10 episodes, Luffy along with Isa make it out of the serpent. Luffy finds all his friends looking like burnt chicken. Robin wakes up to tell him about Anel's plan. And so Luffy and Isa go to find and stop Anel. Before Anel takes off on the Ark Maxim, Luffy and Anel finally meet. Anel shows absolutely no mercy and starts throwing lightning bolt after lightning bolt at Luffy. Yet for some reason, nothing seems to be happening. <gasps> Wait a minute. So once Luffy realizes he has the type advantage, the fight can basically be summed up as Hell yeah, Luffy did it! Luffy falls! Son of a bitch! Anel manages to trap Luffy's arm in a giant golden ball, and then throws Luffy off the ship like it's Smash Bros Ultimate. But one thing's more precious than gold. It's a treasure called friendship. Bullshit! I'd sell out my friends for $50 each in a heartbeat. Not all hope is lost, though, as Sanji finally wakes up and thanks to his horny radar, spots Nami atop the Maxim. He wakes up Usopp and they board the Ark Maxim to rescue Nami. Sanji and Usopp make it to the Maxim. Meanwhile, Nami is struggling to survive until... Bring it on, God! God Usopp comes around to help out. Not by a lot, but he gives his best. They try to escape before Enel can finish them off. Sanji gets between them and takes a Kamehameha to the face so they can escape. Right when Sanji collapses, Enel realizes that the Maxim has been damaged from the inside. All thanks to our crispy Mr. Prince. 
Usopp grabs Sanji, and they all meet back up with Robin. Luffy, Isa, and Pierre eventually show up, but not for long as Luffy climbs Giant Jack to finish Enel. Meanwhile, Nami follows him up. And so, Enel's plan of Death Pia begins. He releases a giant thundercloud into the sky that will significantly boost his power to destroy the island. As lightning rains down from the sky, destroying everything in the island, Wiper gets up and thinks back to the story his village chief told him. The tale of the great warrior Kalgara and his best friend Noland from 400 years ago. On the Grand Line, in the middle of nowhere, a couple of explorers are lost at sea. Their captain is none other than Mont Blanc Noland. This is the story of how he was labeled a liar. During their voyage, they are led by the angelic sounds of a bell and reach what we now know as Jaya, home of the Shandorians. Noland and his crew encounter a boy with a disease known as Tree Fever. The Shandians, however, have no clue about it and believe it to be some curse from God. The Shandians offer up a girl to their god in hopes of getting rid of the disease. Nolan comes in to stop the ceremony, and like your mom whenever you don't clean your room, Leave me alone, mom. I'm depressed. Nolan shares his disdain for unnecessary violence. He asks the Shandorians to give him some time to develop a cure. He has 24 hours or his crew dies. Kalgara, the Shandorian's strongest warrior, watches over Nolan and argues about their ideals and blind faith. You can send an innocent girl to her death. The innocent girl you speak of. She was my daughter! So you're telling me that you told your own daughter to kill herself? Oh, that daddy-daughter dance finna be awkward. Eventually, Nolan makes the cure and befriends the Shandorians. They even find a baby viper they call Nola. This is the same giant snake we see in Skypea. The next morning, Kagura shows the explorers the pride of Shandora. This is the City of Gold, and at the heart of it is the Golden Belfry. The sound of this bell is to tell the world that we are here, to show the ancestors back to their homeland. Weirdly enough, the bell isn't what they protect. What truly matters is the poneglyph inside the bell. The Shandians have been protecting it for many generations. The fun doesn't last long as these bipolar ass people immediately hate Noland again and demand they leave the village or die. Moose, the daughter of Kagura, explains that the trees they cut down are sacred. They're said to hold the souls of the dead as tombs. So their ancestors' spirits are in those trees. I can't believe I didn't know. How would you know? The doctor informs her that the trees had a virus in them and were the source of the tree fever. Moose runs to explain the tribe of their mistake. Literally all of this could have been avoided if they just talked it out. Shandorians are so stubborn, holy shit! Kagura rushes over to Noland and his gang right as they leave. He apologizes for his ignorance and asks that they come back someday. Nolan promises that he'll return soon, and so the Shandians ring the bell so Nolan can find his way back again. Six years later, back at Nolan's hometown, Nolan explains his adventures to the king and mentions the City of Gold. Filled with greed, the king demands Nolan take him and his men to see the City of Gold. Tragedy strikes on the Shandorians, as a powerful knock-up stream sends a chunk of Jaya shooting straight into the sky, landing in Sky Island, with the Golden Bell being sent even further into the Unknown Abyss. Before the Shandorians can recover, divine warriors attack them with their leader, wanting to claim the land as his own and become god. The Shandians fight to protect their homeland. Kagura promises to figure out what's going on and make sure to ring the golden belfry so Nolan can know that they're up in the sky. But not too long after, Kagura dies in battle. Back on the Blue Sea, the king sentences Nolan to death for lying about the Golden City. Nolan continues to plead that the island is real and maybe was sunk to the bottom of the ocean, but nobody believes him and dies forever labeled a liar. Noland and Kagura never got to see one another ever again. I absolutely love this flashback. Sure, it has nothing to do with what's currently going on with Enel and such, but it's just such a great standalone story to me. Plus, it really adds to the emotional weight and lore with all the Shandorians and Cricket wanting to find the Golden City. Alright, back to the present. 
Enel finds the Golden Belfry. Now that he has all that he needs, the Lightning God will destroy Skypea and ascend to the Endless Verth. Luffy continues riding up Giant Jack with one goal in mind, to ring the Golden Bell so Old Man Cricket can hear it and know the island is in the sky. Nami eventually reaches Luffy and they ride the waiver together to catch up and stop Enel once and for all. With Giant Jack falling, Luffy and Nami make it close to the maxim. Luffy shoots himself into the giant ball of lightning and destroys it, causing the island to once again be surrounded by warm white light. Enel prepares for a final assault. Luffy uses probably the coolest move we've seen so far by launching the golden bell at an L. And just like the phrase, kill two birds with one stone, Luffy uses the golden ball to slam an L into the belfry and cause it to ring again. He yells as loud as he possibly can to Cricket that the city of gold that his ancestors have been searching for has been in the sky for the last 400 years. The ringing of the Golden Bell marks the end of the four-century-long war between the Shandorians and Skypeans. Hey, I wonder if, if Pops heard it. Huh? Did you guys say something? All right. The sound of the bell is so strong that even Old Man Cricket, back in Jaya, looks up into the sky and listens. He thanks the Straw Hats for everything they've done. Luffy and Nami reunite with everyone and oh hey, Poggy is alive! Gotta love fake out deaths. Then the entire land of Sky Island party in the City of Gold for three nights in a row celebrating the fire of Shandora. Of course, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows, as Enel is still alive and continues to head for the endless birth known as the moon. Morning hits, and the Straw Hats plan to steal the gold inside Nola and head out. Elsewhere, the Shandorians and Skypeans work together to grab the Golden Belfry. Robin comes along and reads the poneglyph inside the bell, which explains the location of an ancient weapon called Poseidon, similar to the poneglyph in Alabasta about Pluton. Then Robin notices a message carved next to the poneglyph left by Gold Roger, and Robin is absolutely shocked that he knows how to read and write. The Straw Hats come back with the gold while Usopp got a bunch of dials. They then pull an Irish goodbye and head back to the Going Merry. The Straw Hats reach the Going Merry and head for the exit of Sky Pia. The Straw Hats finally land in the Blue Sea and can go back to their normal lives. Ah shit, it's the Marines. And that's all for Sky Pia and the Sky Island Saga. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was gonna be. I can definitely understand people's criticisms for this arc. This is when the One Piece anime really starts to slow down a bit. Some episodes, nothing happens. Plus, a lot of this arc takes place in a jungle rather than in the clouds, which kinda makes it seem generic at first. Despite that, I love Skypea, and to me, it's genuinely dumb that people skip it. Don't skip it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, the whole YouTube shebang, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.